Just wanted to uh, jump in here a couple minutes early, let you guys get on, get situated, get your cup of coffee, get your tea, get your juice, whatever you're drinking this Sunday morning. Um, you know me, I've got my Bulletproof in hand, and uh, yes, it's my second cup. And if you've been following along, something that I've been doing here is uh, I've been reading this, this here, and that's uh, Tiny Habits uh, by uh, BJ Fogg. And uh, I'm really loving it because it's all about small little um, little habits that you uh, that you create in your day, and uh, you uh, you basically uh, there, there's no excuses because it basically allows you to do something small. Uh, and so, for an example, uh, on my second cup of coffee. Uh, while it's brewing, I head to the gym in the garage and I do a couple of sets and then I come back in and then I finish off my coffee. I go back out, I do another couple and then I'm back. And so within like less than 10 minutes, I've done something that I might not have done because obviously when you go to work out, sometimes you're like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't, well, you can't go to the gym right now anyway, but you, you know, anytime you're doing that for me anyway, I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym right now. It's just, uh, you know, 35, 40 minutes of my day. I just don't want to take up that time. Um, so, um, we're going to start here pretty soon. Uh, looks like we got about a minute left until we kick this thing off. I see uh, some of my people here on, uh, Facebook already. Karen, what's up? And yes, you have your coffee. That is awesome. What you drinking? Just black. Is it a little bit of cream? What do you got in your coffee? Uh, Hassan, um, what's up Hassan? Welcome back. Uh, and you know, Hassan, you never sent me, uh, you sent me an email, but you never sent me your address. I want to send you a t-shirt. Um, Josh, what's up? Good morning to you as well. Uh, <laughs> Karen says lots of cream. All right, go easy on the cream. Uh, okay. Uh, and I'm going to say this again too. We got some people on Instagram showing up. What's up Instagram? How you guys doing? Um, so yeah, today's, today's talk is going to be about, uh, because this is a big sticking point and yesterday we actually addressed it a little bit, but I'm going to go a little, a little deeper in this area is uh, do I have to be an expert in order to create content in my brand? Um, and the answer is no, and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna give you some options that you can do, some things that I've used. Um, that's what we're gonna be talking about. If you have any other questions though, please put them in the comments, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them, or maybe on an, on an upcoming Coffee with Scott. By the way, if you have any friend or family that you think that would want to hang out with us in the morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, invite them. We'd love to have them. We'd love to meet them if they're, you know, the people are our people, right? Like we don't want to just invite someone that's like, I don't want to be here, right? We want to, we want the right people here. So if you know people that want to, uh, you know, hang out, talk business, but also talk life, right? Like, like me, it's all about this first and then business because this here dictates what we actually do. A lot of times we're held back by, you know, limiting beliefs or perfectionism, which we talked about yesterday. Um, so all of those things. So again, if you know someone that would uh, get value from this or that you think would want to join us for a, for a cup of coffee, invite them. We'd love to hang out with them. All right. All right. So let's get rocking and rolling. Uh, Oh, lots of cream. I got to get that off of the screen there so I can read the rest here. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, all right. Uh, Eddie. Eddie, what's up? Just got back from bike ride. Weather in the UK is great at the moment. Eddie, that's awesome, man. Bike ride. How many miles? How many miles did you do this morning? Just curious. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Salama? I think that's how you pronounce your name. T? Okay. T's good. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Woodstock Ross, what's up, man? Uh, got some energy. Bulletproof coffee. I've been up since five, too, by the way. Already did my walk, already read, already did some uh some email, uh, just to get kind of like my inbox caught up and did a couple of things because we've got a, a big uh, upcoming uh promotion we're doing tomorrow for Brand Creators Academy. Did that, and here we are. We're hanging out. So uh yeah, uh I got a little bit of energy. All right, so let's get to it, guys. All right, so let me ask you first. Are you creating content right now in your business? Yes or no? All right. So answer that question. Drop it in the comments. Drop it in the comments, Instagram. And the reason why I'm asking this question is because if you've been following along for any period of time, whether you've started your business or you're just starting your business or you have a brand that's up and running, but you're mainly focusing on physical products, I want to know that. But I also want to know, are you producing content in your brand? And if the answer is no, I want to know why, 
right. it, why are you not? Is it time? Is it because you don't think that you have, you know, enough things to say in your market? You're not good, right? Like, what is it? Let me know. Just curious. I want to know this stuff. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah, so keep them coming in. I see a bunch coming in. Um, no, okay. So Josh says no, just getting started. Uh, Karen, uh, okay. Karen says want, want to start. I've been putting out videos. Uh, yeah. Woodstock Ross says no, need to pivot from ride share driving right now. Yep. Okay. Uh, Salma says no. Um, uh, Dave Cohen with us again this morning. What's up, my friend? Uh, Dave's a good friend of mine. I actually met him at volleyball, uh, with my daughter and, uh, became good friends with him. And we, uh, yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of stuff in common. And, uh, the one thing we don't have in common, Dave, is, um, we got to get that content created and you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so we're going to get, we're going to get with that. We're going to get with that. Um, okay. So perfectionism in tech Salamis says starting to do more. I'm a perfectionist though. Ha ha. Yeah. Yesterday we talked all about perfectionism and that is a, that is a, uh, that's a killer. Um, that there, um, <laughs> what's that? Uh, is it stav stav? I can't really read that. That's my, that's my uncle. So Dave, you must've invited some people. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, okay. So let's, uh, let's get to it real quick. Okay. And then I want to bring this back up. I want to drill into uh, Tim says, no, I haven't started creating content yet. just at the beginning. I'm at the market validation stage. I'm a decent writer, but nervous about doing anything with video or voice. It's another good one. Um, please do a live with tech setup for going live. Okay. I, yeah, I could do that for sure. Um, it's not that hard actually. It's pretty simple. Um, and you don't have to be perfect. That's the other thing, right? Like, if you think about trying to be perfect and getting everything perfect, you won't ever do it. If you go back and look at some of my older stuff, not perfect. Um, so anyway, I'm looking over here. <laughs> Dave says, as usual, you're right. Dave, you said it. You said it right there. So I've got proof of it. You said it. Uh, okay. So uh, all right, we, we will definitely do that. All right. So let, let's talk about this. So the first thing that I want you to think about is number one we all probably agree that we've all searched for something online before. Okay. We've searched for something and then it led us to a page or a website, right? Now that page that you landed on that gave you the answer that gave you the solution or gave you whatever you searched for. All right. That page is on a website. So let's just get that out in the open, right? Like it's on a website. So that website put out a piece of content that answered a specific question or showed a how to or whatever that led you to that piece of content. But that piece of content resides on what we call our home base. So what we want to do is we want to have multiple, multiple questions and answers and how to's and product reviews. We want a bunch of that stuff out there in the marketplace that lead people to our home base, right? So I think we all agree. That's how people can find you. The cool thing is, is Google and YouTube, Pinterest, all of those, it's free traffic, right? All we have to do is put our content out there, our assets out there. And I'm going to share something with you. Just this morning, I did a little report inside of uh, Brand Creators Academy, which is our brand creators, uh, our little tribe that we have in there that we're helping people build their brands. And we're documenting two case studies inside of Brand Creators Academy. Well, this morning, I had two record high days yesterday for traffic, okay? Um, we're touching almost 1,000 page views on a brand we just started less than six months ago. And the other one is actually a little bit um, uh, earlier than that, a little bit newer, maybe about five, five and a half months. That one's just about at 500 page views, okay? Um, and uh, unique visitors, meaning an individual person coming to the site, over 600 on the one and over 275 on the other, right? So right now that's starting to build momentum, okay? Because we dropped content out there and that are leading people back, all right? But so many people, they get stuck on perfectionism, which we talked about yesterday, and they never put out that content, right? So imagine having a thousand people go through your content today, right? Think about the power in that. So when you, to harness and wrap your head around that, you start to say, wow, 
okay, let's see, how do I do that? Well, I got to produce content. What does my market want? Number one. And number two, how do I give it to them? So figuring out what they want isn't hard. Figure out what they want by going through Google and asking questions, right? So can you catch bass in a pond, right? Um, can you use I don't know, maple for wood carving. Like, I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there that's different than bass fishing, right? So if we do that, we're going to let uh, Google tell us what it's searching for or what other people are searching for, right? So then what we can do is we can decide, okay, if we can create that content. You might be saying, well, Scott, I don't know the answers to that. I'm not an expert. Here's what you are. You're a reporter. So this is what we call the reporter model, all right? You can just be the person that goes out there and finds all the information so someone else doesn't have to. And then you basically take all that, distill it down and create one page that solves their problem by not having to go over to a hundred different websites, right? So you're the reporter in a sense, okay? So a lot of people say, it's got the, the content's already out there. Why am I gonna create the same content? Because you're gonna have a better way of framing it. You're gonna have a better way of organizing it maybe, right? So that's what I want you to think about being a reporter in your market. Okay. That's an easy way for you to get out of your own way and go, okay, I just got to do a little bit of the research and then just distill it down and make it easier for someone else when they search for something to bring it on over and, and, you know, get the information that they're looking for. Okay. The second way of doing this where you don't have to be an expert is basically you just document your journey. You document what's happening right? You're documenting uh, how things are working, how they're not working. Uh, and people love the stuff that's not working, by the way, right? Five things I learned uh, not to do uh, when trying to bass, you know, catch more bass, right? You want to know that so you don't do them, right? So anytime that I can share my failures as I'm learning, it's gold. People love that, right? We all love that. Wouldn't you love to know three things that every blog post should have, right? That's something that I learned. Or three things to avoid when writing a blog post. You're like, yeah, I want to know those three. What are they, Scott? Let me know, right? So the thing is, is a lot of people think that they have to have an expertise in something, right? So for example, I've got a guitar behind me, right? I'm not a professional guitar player. I've been playing since 15, but I took lessons for maybe three years. After that, I'm just a... I play by ear. I just kind of noodle a little bit. I'm not, and actually I thought about getting back into it at this stage of my life. I probably want to go and start taking some more private lessons, but online now. Um, but I'm not, but I'm not an expert. What I could do is I could start a whole channel or a whole blog on me learning how to play guitar and kind of like making a documentation or, or a journey of like all of the different things and how I've progressed. Right. So someone else that's starting, you could be the person that's like, oh, that person wasn't always great. They struggled and then they learned and I can see the, I can see the progression, right? So we all want that. So what I would say is document, document the journey and you don't have to pretend that you're the expert, right? I started our podcast, the amazing seller podcast show. I, I started that without being an expert and I was totally upfront with them. Like, listen, you know, I've been in the online business for a while. I've been brick and mortar for a while. I know some things about business, but I don't know this Amazon thing, but I'm figuring it out as I go. I'm going to go ahead and create a podcast that basically documents my journey and what's what I'm learning, right? And as I'm learning, people are coming in and like, I really like this guy because he's telling me as it is. He's not trying to make it seem like everything is just unicorns and rainbows, right? It's like we, you know, we can see that this guy's real. And that's what I've always wanted, right? And by doing that, you attract people like this that's hanging out with me right now. We've got some people on Facebook. We got some people on YouTube. We got people on Periscope. We got people on Instagram. We got people that are now coming in, even though I can say I wasn't an expert, right? And I, st I still don't consider myself an expert. Am I a little bit further along than other people? And I think, yes. You know, do I have an expertise in writing emails? Yeah, because I've done a lot of them right? But I've learned, right? But I'm always learning. And I think if we're always learning, we always have something to say. We always have something to write into the market. It's just your perspective on it or your way of distilling things down. There's thousands of people teaching online business. There's thousands of people teaching how to write emails, 
uh, you know, how to build an email list, but not everyone breaks it down the same way. Not everyone learns the same way. So don't, don't think to yourself, you can't create this content yourself. Okay. Now the last way, which is super easy. And this is what we're doing in the brands that we're building inside of brand creators Academy, by the way. All right. Actually one of them specifically, I do not have an interest in this market. I do not know a lot about the market. I knew zero when I started and all we're doing is we're, we're good at doing the research to figure out what people are searching for. Okay. That we're good at, right? Because we've done it. Okay. As long as I can figure out what people are searching for and I can find other people to write me or produce content for me, I just need them to supply me the content. I'll put it in place and start getting the traffic because I've learned that skill set. So that's the one thing you always want to understand too. You're learning a skills, you're, uh, you're learning a skill set. You're, you're never going to unlearn that skill set. That's a skill set you'll have from now until, you know, the day that you leave this earth, right? It's just, you're going to have that. It's wisdom, right? It's, it's knowledge. And to me, knowledge is power. So if you know how to do that, right, then you just need to find the right people. So if you don't want to write your own content, if you don't want to produce your own videos, there's two things you can do. Number one, if you know someone that is in the industry, I'll give you an example. So I know right now there's someone and Dave who's, who's on here right now, Dave knows who I'm talking about. There's a guy at volleyball right now who loves volleyball. He loves beach volleyball. Okay. Now I see the opportunities because I understand this online space, right? But this guy, he set up this, or he runs this organization for beach volleyball. Now beach is different than indoor, totally different, right? So he's an expert. He's been doing it since college. He's, you know, he's really thrown himself into the beach volleyball world. It's a whole nother ball game, right? Knows a lot. And he, and as soon as you start talking to him about it, well, he lights right up. But he doesn't want to create a blog and website traffic. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to do his in-person, which right now is crazy, right? Who knows right now he could be out of work. I don't know. They aren't playing volleyball. I can tell you that. I don't know how long that organization is going to be able to pay him. But if I was him, I would be creating all of the training that he's doing for beach volleyball online. I'd be just creating blog content, but he doesn't want to do it. So what if I approached him and I said, Hey, how would you like to make a hundred bucks this Saturday? sit down with me for two hours and just give me drills that these girls need to do. Then maybe next Saturday, I say, sit down with me for another Saturday. I'll give you another hundred bucks for two hours. And you can then shoot some videos of what needs to be done. Then maybe I can also talk about in another Saturday for a hundred bucks, we can sit down and you can tell me everything that I need to know about beach volleyball in different stages along the way. You see, so I can tap into him as an expert who does, have, he has no interest in going online. I don't know that because I've never approached him because I'm always careful about that because I got enough stuff to do, but that's what I would do. I would tap into him because the minute I say, Hey, you want to sit down and talk volleyball? He's like, yeah. Right. But what happens if I say, Hey, you want to sit down for volleyball and I'll pay you 200 or a hundred bucks for two hours of your time. And he says, uh, yeah, I would have talked to you anyway, but sure. I'll take a hundred bucks. Who wouldn't, right? So there's people out there right now, I know for a fact would show up and give their information even for free, just because they want to be recognized, right? If you're in the bass fishing market, I'm sure there's bass fishermen that just talk all day long about bass fishing and you don't have to be the expert. So it's kind of like being the reporter in a sense, right? But if you understand the business model and you understand how to get traffic, how to, you know, how to write some basic SEO content, which isn't hard, maybe produce some videos on YouTube, whatever, that's all that you need. And so right now is a perfect example, right? The time that we're sitting here having coffee, I'm secluded in my house. All of you are secluded. All of you, all of you are secluded. We're all, you should be anyway, right? Cause we don't want to spread this virus, right? But now my guy at the volleyball courts, okay, he's, I I don't know him personally as far as like, you know, one-to-one, like I don't know him that, that well, but I know that that organization isn't up and running right now. So that business isn't bringing in any money. And they're talking about giving refunds for our nationals uh, volleyball season. So that sucks, right? 
And then the beach volleyball hasn't even started. It's not supposed to start. It was supposed to start this month, I believe. And that was a whole thing, right? So I don't know if he's going to collect unemployment. I don't know if he has other side work that he does. And I don't know what that would be. Now is the time that you should be creating, even if it's a side hustle revenue stream, you should be doing this. You should be focusing on how do I plant these seeds to go ahead and create traffic and then I can monetize it later. Don't worry about monetizing it right now. Just start building that out and do it consistently, consistently over time. If you do that, I'm telling you, once you get traffic, monetization is easy. Now, I said this yesterday. If you were to come to me and say, Scott, I got traffic. You know, I'm getting traffic, Scott. I'm getting 1,000 visitors a day. Can you help me turn that into money? We got options. Like, we got all kinds of options, right? Uh, but if you don't have the traffic, can't do it, right? So when you can get the traffic, to me, traffic is currency. If I can get the traffic, the right traffic, we can turn that into dollars. If that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting you focused on the market, getting out of your own way with perfectionism, and also not knowing how to show up in the market with content, even if you're not the expert, right? Now, if you are the expert, no excuse. Well, Scott, I'm not good on video. Really? I think you probably are just fine, right? Because people that are looking for information, they don't care how you are on video. They just want the information. That's it. That's all they want, right? So um, don't, don't go down that path, all right? So, all right. Now that I kind of ranted there a little bit on that, and hopefully that was helpful, uh, do you have any questions on this at all? I'm going to go ahead to the comments here and see. I'm going to take a sip of coffee because I've been talking here. Um, let me know on Instagram if you have any questions there as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and answer some questions. Um, but, yeah, does that make sense, guys? Does I mean, in what I'm saying, does it make sense to you? Does that seem like something you would want? Would you want people coming to your website every day? pretty much for free. And oh, by the way, I'm not sure if your market would lend itself to Pinterest, but we've been dabbling in the Pinterest world here for a little bit, about the past month and a half. We're starting to see some really good traffic um, and uh, it's starting to starting to get me pretty excited. Um, in that one brand I was talking about, um, we had 105 people yesterday just from Pinterest and we started it uh, a month and a half ago, all right? Um, the other one is about 40-ish a day, all right? And these are organic traffic pieces. They, they aren't hard, and it's just pins that are being pinned on our posts. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, okay, let's get to it. All right, uh, let's see. Tim, Tim back here. Maybe you, okay, there it is. Um, okay, okay, so let, me, let me answer that question for you. Um, so Tim, Tim had said, I haven't started creating content yet. Just at the beginning, I'm at the market validation stage. I'm a decent writer, but nervous about doing anything with video. Well, you know what? Lean on your strengths. If you're a decent writer, write, man. Because let me tell you something. Google loves write, writing uh, or uh, written posts. Love them, right? They, they get indexed. They start sending you traffic. So if you're a good writer or even just semi-decent and you don't mind writing, that is huge. I personally I hate writing, okay? I don't like it. Okay. Um, I wish I did, but I don't, I force myself to, but I don't like it. I like doing this. This is my wheelhouse, right? That's why I have a podcast. Um, but if you, if you have a strength in writing, lean on it. And that goes for anyone. If you have, if you are better on video, then start with video, right? You can always transcribe the video, turn it into a blog post, or you can do it the other way around, write a blog post, turn it into a video. There's options. Okay, but I would lean on that, Tim. I would lean on that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Salama, is it better to start with one platform? Yes. Um, so I, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, content. Here is, in a perfect world, this is what it would look like for me, okay? One, you start with your website, your home base, okay? And that is where everything is going to reside. We build our foundation, we build our house, and then we can start filling it with the furniture and you know the decor. Um, but what we want to do is we want to build that first because that's our that's our our house, right? That's our home base. The secondary one would be YouTube. Okay. And then YouTube, what I would do is I would take the YouTube videos, I would optimize them for YouTube traffic, which also get found in search on Google. Okay. And then I would embed that video in a blog post. Okay. So that's what I would do. The third thing would be Pinterest. 
Pinterest as long as your market is there. Now, again, look at your market. Is your market showing up on these platforms? Now, some people say, well, Scott, what about Facebook? What about Instagram? What about Instagram? Um, they're not evergreen platforms for me. They're amplification platforms, okay? They allow me to send out a, a, maybe a little post and say, just wrote a blog post on this. If you need help, read it, right? Or Instagram, check out uh, you know, uh, five ways uh, to catch more bass, right? That would be that. To me, once I post here on Instagram, this live will stay for 24 hours, then it's gone. Uh, your, your main page or your main feed, uh, you put up an image, it's there, but after it's there, people aren't going to scroll that far. Uh, sometimes people be nosy and will, but that's about it. And then your stories, 24 hours, right? Facebook, yeah, it might be there, but no one's searching on Facebook. So I always look at the search intent. Where is the search intent? What is that platform? Which one? So I go Google, YouTube, Pinterest. All right. So that's those three. Okay. Karen. Uh, Karen. Okay. Uh, so I pivoted to make education, uh, educational materials. I've been putting out fun videos to help kids learn. I love that by the way. Um, I believe fun and learning go hand in hand. So I'm starting to develop the product. So I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. So what should I focus on the most? I do have followers, but not emails. I feel like I have to, I have too much to do help. Uh, okay. Karen first, take a deep breath. Let's do it together. Ooh, feels good when you do that, by the way. So do it a little breathing there. Okay. So overwhelm is a big deal. Here's what I'm seeing. I, I don't want you to worry about the product. See, when you start worrying about the product, it starts to skew everything else. Okay. I want you to just focus on how to, how to really lean into that educational material. Okay. Um, those fun videos, keep making them. Uh, also, if you're putting out videos, are you putting them out on YouTube? If you are, are you doing a little bit of research to do a little bit of keyword research to make sure that when you put them up, they're not just being thrown up there with just some okay keywords. You might want to do a little bit of research there and see what other videos have done. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the thing. I wouldn't worry about the product yet. Okay. Now, as far as I do have followers, but not emails, one, one thing to do is you can either do a giveaway or a contest with your followers and say, Hey, we're doing a special contest. We're going to do, um, the ultimate learning kit or something like that. And then parents are going to enter because you're going after the parents. You're not going after the kids necessarily. Uh, the parents are the ones that's going to sit their kid in front of it. Um, and then from there, you're going to, uh, you'd have an email opt-in that would allow them to enter the giveaway or the contest for the ultimate giveaway. Right. And then from there, you're going to get the email addresses. The other little thing that I would do there is when you create that landing page, the email uh, opt-in form, as we call it, I would put a Facebook pixel there so we can start building that custom audience on Facebook as well. A little bit more advanced, but again, just throwing it out there. All right, Karen. So that's what I would do though. Focus on the, uh, the content. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Uh, Alexander, what's up? Uh, what is your content creation process? Brainstorming, outlining. Okay. Good question. And Instagram, if you have any questions, drop them in there. I'll go back and I'll swipe up or I'll swipe wherever I can see those comments. Okay. Uh, what is your content creation process? So pretty much, um, if you're talking about like a niche website, okay, more like how to catch more bass, right? The first part of that process is I need to fill my buckets of content. I talk a lot about this, uh, in the playbook. I talk a lot about this in brand creators Academy on my podcast buckets. So we have a questions bucket, we have a how to bucket, and then we have a product bucket. Okay. Just so think about your content as buckets. Now we want to fill those buckets. You're usually going to be able to fill the questions bucket, the, the fastest and the earliest on because questions are very, very easy to find people searching for. So what we do is we spend time filling those buckets. Okay. And that could be going to Google, doing how to catch, and then letting it auto populate. We'll use a tool, uh, like, uh, what is it? Ask the public. I think it is, um, that one there. Um, you can use keywords everywhere. You can just any tool that will give you ideas, Uber suggest any of those tools, but you need to start with like a phrase of some kind or a keyword of some kind. Then once you find a website, which I actually just did this yesterday for one of our trainings inside the Academy, 
where I went in and I found a website that's in our market. And from there, I started exploring their content, how well it did, uh, what people were searching for off of that content. So really it comes down to really spending some time to do the research first, then the content creation process for us in this one brand, because it's written content, is really finding writers. So we find writers that will do the research for us. They will answer the question in about 1,500 to 2,000 word article with images. And then we just take that content, we post it on our blog. We use a plugin called Yoast, um, which will also help us with SEO, search engine optimization. And then we hit publish. And then we go on to the next. Like that is the process. You need to fill the buckets. You need to then have the stuff either written or a video recorded. And then from there, you need to post it on the website and you need to optimize it for SEO, search engine optimization, and then hit publish. And that is it. Then what we do after around two or three months, we'll start to see which one of these keywords or these blog posts are starting to gain some traction. And then we'll look at it and go, well, we're in position number five. What if we gave that a little bit more love and got to position one? What's the potential for traffic? We might increase traffic by a thousand visitors per month if we get to the one position. Then we'll start to, to figure out if we can increase the rank, but not at first. We, we let it kind of, we throw the seeds out there, we broadcast the seeds, and then we water them a little bit, and then we see which ones are starting to grow you know, better, and then we go from there. So hopefully that helped you. All right, uh, let's see here. Okay, that was that one. Uh, okay, cool, Tim. Okay. When just launching the business, should you wait to build up many pieces of content before publishing, or publishing the very first article you create? Do it, man. Like, don't wait. I see so many people go, yeah, I want to wait till I get like 10 articles created. Why? You know, like why, why wait? Right? Like the quicker you get that published, the quicker it gets indexed by Google, the quicker that you can get traffic. There's no reason to wait. Right? I would, if you have three in the, the queue right now and they're ready to go, publish them. I'd publish them one today, one tomorrow, one the next day. I might not publish them all in one day. I would I would stagger them. If you have 10, do, do one day for the next 10 days and then get into a routine where you do at least one per week. Um, I, would do, I would try to do more than that eventually. Right now in the two uh, brands that we're building um, inside of the academy, we're publishing anywhere from 15 to 20 articles a month now, okay? But we have writers that are doing this and the writers that are doing it have been with us now for about four months each. Um, some of, uh, some have fell off and then we had to, you know, retrain a few. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically it. So yeah, don't, uh, don't get hung up on, you want to get a whole bunch there ready before you publish, publish as soon as possible. Uh, Chris, what's up, Chris? Um, I found out many people on Fiverr love to write about my niche. The cost varies 15 to $35 an article. They mentioned they have a passion in this niche. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's not easy to do. So I would say lean on that. Like, yeah, take that. I mean, 15 to $35 an article we're at, we're, we're spending between like $28 to about $35 per article right now. Um, and it's taken a little bit of work to get there. Um, but, uh, we aren't using fiber. We, I think we tried a couple of fiber writers didn't work out. It doesn't mean you can't find them. It sounds like you did. And they have so you have someone that's in your niche. Um, but we we actually go to iWriter, um, we go to Text Broker, um, we just tried Content Pit. We're still kind of playing with that. So there's a few different places. Um, you can go to uh, Free Up and find someone. Upwork. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can do it. The biggest thing is just finding someone that can write uh, well, and you might even have to train them a little bit. So it might take a few articles to get it dialed in. Once you do, then you're off to the races. Um, all right, cool. So that was that one. Good job. Thanks, Chris, for posting that. That's awesome news, by the way. Um, Salama, again, some tips to start on Pinterest, like how often to post research, et cetera. Um, right now, it's actually funny because uh, my daughter, Alexis, is the one that's doing our Pinterest stuff. And she uh, she actually just created a training, which is going live tomorrow inside the Academy. But basically, this is it in a nutshell. Um, you're creating boards in your market. And then from there, you're posting other people's stuff. And then you're going to create some boards of your own. And then once you have content created on your website, you're going to create a pin that will be posted on that blog post, but then also is linked from your Pinterest account board over to your uh, website. How often? 
Um, we are basically keeping things active about, I would say three to five times per week. Um, but you're also having someone or yourself going in there and adding some other people's pins to some of your other boards, just to show that the account is active. Um, but basically, um, how often, if we have three posts a week, it'll be three times a week, um, on those posts. Um, so that's, and again, not overcomplicating things. Um, Another question from Salam, tips on automating email writing. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. We do a lot of broadcast messaging because we want to be like in, we want to be timely. But um, if we're doing like a follow-up sequence, I would say um, at first, when they first get on your list, if they're signing up for something, um, I would show up at least uh, twice a week, um, sometimes three times a week, just so that way you're staying front of mind. Um, but I like broadcasting um, the email list to stay kind of like uh, on top of it. Um, but automation is sometimes it can be good, but sometimes it can be bad. Um, let's see who, who said this. I'm not seeing this, this Facebook user because they must not have given the permission, but it says, what's up? Hashtag keep crushing it. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, Alexander, very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Glad it was helpful. Okay. Uh, Hassan, why do we have to create a content about, uh, wait a minute. Why do we have to create content about uh, sea bass because we love to catch sea bass. I'm quite a sure, I'm sure I understand that, Hassan. Or we want to sell a product about catching sea bass. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Um, how do we create content about sea bass um, because we love to catch sea bass? I think what you're trying to say is how do you write content because you have a product to sell? You can do that, but you can't make all your content about your product. Um, that's you're going to be limited on what you can say and do. And it's honestly, it's, it's more about the traffic in your market that could lead people over to your brand. That could potentially be someone that would be interested in your products. Um, so any other questions over here? Oh yeah, we got some Instagram. I have uh, tons of content videos. I just don't have a platform business model, etc. How would you work back to this? Um, so you have a, a ton of content, uh, videos. Where is the content? Where does the content reside? Um, is it on your, on just on your own platform or on your own website, or is it on your hard drive or is it on YouTube? Um, if you can let me know a little bit more there, I can help you, um, or give you some suggestions anyway. Um, uh, okay, cool. Um, take a sip of coffee. We got another question here from down under bedding and mattress. What's up? Take a sip of coffee guys. Um, what is the best way to find the remote content creators? If I have the topics for the blog, can I find someone for 50 bucks per article? Yeah, 100% you can. I'm finding them for 30 to $40, actually less than 40. Um, the best way to find them, it's gonna take a little bit of work, but the best way to find them is to go on either iWriter, have some articles started to be uh, written, free up um, content pit, which is a little bit more exp expensive, excuse me. Um, who else? Um, Upwork, uh, I said text broker. So there's a bunch that you can try. Um, and, and it's going to take a little bit of trial and error. I don't want anyone thinking you're just going to go ahead and go, Oh, I found a place that writes articles. They'll write one for me and it'll be perfect. It won't be. Um, you're going to have to take it and then train them. And as far as like, um, how to, uh, write it the way you want it to be written. Like, like you want to give them almost like a template. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, let's see, Karen, thank you for all your help. I will make sure I keep breathing. Yes, breathe people, breathe. It's a good thing. And I mean, ah, let it out. I'm telling you right now, we live up here a lot. We gotta let it go. Um, it helps. Uh, okay, so, uh, Salma, again, if you were restarting your business, what would you do to have maximum impact on people who are going through difficult time right now? <clears throat> So are you asking if I would start a business on how to help people deal with difficult situations or how would I start a business because we're in a difficult time? I guess I need a little bit more clarification on that. Um, right now, personally, like we're starting, we're, we're going to start another niche project inside of Brand Creative Academy, um, which opens tomorrow, by the way, um, you know, for enrollment, but we're going to be starting in this difficult time. And what I'm doing is I'm doing exactly what I've been doing for the past, gosh, 10 years. And really it's how to find the market, find the market, right? A good market, put out content, 
that helps answer questions, solve problems, whatever, right? And then from there, just showing up and doing that for the next six months on that one brand. And then once we get to that point, then we're going to start thinking about monetization. Like one brand I was talking about that we're over, we're over 13,000 page views for the month last month, but we're going to probably hit double that this month. If we're stay on track yesterday, we had uh, almost a thousand. So if we kept that pace, we'd be at 30,000 page views for the month. If we had 30,000 page views for the month, I'm going to be turning on Mediavine, which is an ad network. And we'll start making money pretty much day one just from the ad traffic. So I'm not changing anything other than I'm not going to be dependent on one channel. Like that's it. So I'm going to find my market. I'm going to validate it. I'm going to start producing content in that market. I'm going to build an email list in that market. I'm going to uh, build out my, my uh, traffic assets and they're going to reside on my blog. They're going to reside on possibly YouTube and then definitely Pinterest. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then from there, I'm going to start looking at ways to monetize. And if physical products make sense, we will go down that road, but that's not going to be the ultimate goal. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. That's what I'm doing when we're starting. Um, Woodstock Ross, where can I learn to become a remote content creator? Um, so you want to be that creator? You want to create content? I mean, Fiverr is an easy one. Um, iWriter is another one. They're looking for contributors all the time. Um, so yeah, you can be a content creator a hundred percent. There's also, if you want to go through Upwork, you can do it. Um, but yeah, any of those platforms, um, are looking for writers, good writers. Um, uh, okay, cool. This is a good question too. I like this, uh, big rig CEO. What up? Uh, what is your process for transcriptions of your videos? There's a couple different things you can do. There's two services. One is temi.com. T-E-M-I.com, Temi, okay? Uh, Temi.com will do a decent transcription for you, okay? And what I mean by decent is there's gonna be a few errors in there. It'll need to be refined. If you use their um, their main, uh, it's basically, it's a sister company, um, is Rev.com, R-E-V.com. That is actually someone that is writing the transcript themselves. It's not it's not done by a, um, by a software, okay? Um, and that there is guaranteed to be a hundred percent accurate. The difference is this, it's going to be a dollar, a dollar or a dollar 10. Um, uh, let's see, um, is it per minute? I believe, or yeah. Yeah. So for 30 minutes to be like 30, $35. Um, if you do Temi, it's going to be only 10 or I think I thought it was 10 cents. It might be a little bit more now. Let's call it 20 cents. Um, it's going to get you 90% of the way there. Um, so that's what I would say on that. Um, so there's no reason to not have that done. Uh, back to down under bedding and mattress. <clears throat> um, can you put your name there so I can call you by name too? Um, do you feel you would be successful right now on Amazon? If you started today compared to five years ago, it's gotten so much harder. Well, um, do I think that, no, if I didn't, if I followed the old way of doing things, no, um, I would not like everything changes, right? In business. It doesn't matter if you're brick and mortar. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on any of that stuff. Um, we wouldn't do things the way we used to do them because everything has changed, right? So I would not start by just looking for a product. And I talked about this yesterday, right? I started, uh, when I started on Amazon, I said, you know what? Products are selling. You can private label a product. Let's just go ahead and find a product that's selling well and go ahead and do it. We did it and it worked, right? But then it's changed. Because I've been in business for a very long time, you know, through brick and mortar, through online businesses, when I see the market shift, I shift, right? So I would never, ever advise anyone to follow that model anymore, right? And I've never told anyone to just find a hero product and go sell it and then find another hero product and sell it. It's always been, if you're going to do it, find products that serve a market that could be linked together, right? Because when it's the hardest part is getting a customer. When you get a customer, it's easier to sell them more of what they are either purchased or more of stuff that's similar to what they purchased. So I would not recommend that. And I wouldn't do that. So no, I don't believe, but I wouldn't change. Right? I wouldn't, I mean, I would change the way that I'm doing business. I wouldn't just go and launch a product or a few products. Um, so if you're watching this or you're here having coffee with us and you are dependent on a channel because your product um, is, is residing on a certain platform and you're dependent on that and you don't have the exterior or the external traffic assets, you need to fix that. You need to fix it now.
All right. So that would be my advice. Um, uh, Salama, again, how important is, is passion when starting an Amazon business? First off, time out. We're not starting an Amazon business. Please get that out of your vocabulary. Get it out of your vocabulary. Get it out of your vocabulary. No one should be starting an Amazon business. Okay. That means that you're going to start a business that resides on someone else's platform and they can go ahead and kick the, you know, uh, you know, or take your legs out. We don't want that. So you got to change that. You're building an online business. Okay. That's where I want you to go. And I want you to think, but how important is passion? It's not that important. It's, it's definitely an advantage because when you wake up every day, you're going to be excited to work on it, but I'm working in a brand right now. And I'm going to work on another brand coming up that it's not my passion. It's not my passion at all. I've got a business partner. We've built a brand over the past three years that has, that got 2 million uh, page views last year and a million visitors. And it's not my passion or their passion, but we were able to go out there and we know how to go out and, and get the traffic in a market, but we need to validate that first. Um, so that's that. Um, okay. Woodstock Ross says, yes, you want to be a creator. Yeah. Go to iWriter, go to free up, go to uh, content, any of those. And they'll have something there that says you are a contributor. Um, another one from Salama pros and cons between digital versus physical products. Um, I like them both, but here's the deal. It's a lot easier to keep inventory on a digital product than a physical product. So there's a pro. Um, the con with it, there isn't really a lot. The con is that it might be a little bit harder for you to create one of those because you're going to be creating it or you're going to have to get someone to create it and you got to learn that process, which isn't hard, by the way. I've done it numerous times and I still do it. Um, but physical products, the, uh, the cons with that are you need inventory. So it costs money to get the inventory, right? Right now we're dealing with not being able to get our inventory shipped into Amazon, or we're not being able to get our inventory shipped regardless, or we're not even be able to, our supplier might not be able to send us stuff because they're shut down, right? So those are the, those are the cons. The pros to a physical product is people love physical products and people buy physical products, right? So there's a little bit of a perceived value there. Um, so hopefully that helped you. All right. Um, let me go over here to Instagram real quick. Uh, and let me see here. Uh, let's see. Um, 5 PM here in Israel, but I'm having a cup, a cup of coffee with you. Awesome. Thanks for showing up. Uh, great info, Scott. Uh, oh, Queen Carrie, what's up? Uh, great info. Uh, this is my first coffee talk. I love it. Awesome. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys, I'm leaning in over here. I'm trying to read my phone. Um, just make sure that I'm not missing. This one a little bit longer today, guys, but uh, I wanted to answer all these questions. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, documenting is going to be my angle of pursuit. Just seems more natural. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a great, it's a great angle um, to do. Uh, Okay. Awesome. All right, cool. So, um, guys, we went a little, a little long here today, but I'm okay with that because, uh, this was a good coffee talk. And, uh, as long as they don't kick us out of Starbucks, uh, we're good, right? Well, yeah, our, our virtual Starbucks. Um, one more question here from Salama. Why did you choose to publish a downloadable book versus a printed book? How does that work? Okay. So what you're talking about is this, I assume, right? This right here. Okay. Here's the reason. I was shipping these, okay? And here's the problem. People don't want to wait for this, number one. They, uh, they want it instantly. You have problems when you ship things, especially if you're shipping it globally. And the shipping cost on it is astronomic a lot of times. This book weighs quite a bit. It's kind of thick as well. It's 107 pages. So I was like, you know what? I think people would find this valuable. Okay, this is my playbook, by the way. So everything we talk about is all kind of in here. And this this guy here, Jesse from Stillet, um, he basically did the um, documenting the journey. He's got over fifty thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube, making uh, decent money off of that right now. He's got a lot of opportunities that came his way. The reason why is because I wanted it to get in people's hands as quick as possible, and I encourage people to print it out. So once you do grab a copy, um, I jump on video and I'm like, hey. Thanks so much for grabbing it. Now go print your copy at um, Office Max for, you know, I don't know, seven or eight bucks, have it bound, and then you got a physical copy. Um, so that's why. 
So basically $4.99 for me to put this together. Um, and I figure if anyone is really truly interested and they want the playbook, um, it's worth $4.99. So that's basically the reason um, behind that. So just to be upfront with you guys, um, I did, um, I did the, the physical pro or the, the physical book version and, um, I had more, I had more people wanting it and just being like, just give me the digital copy. Um, so that's what we did. So we fixed that. Um, so that's the reason why. Yeah. And no problem, Salma. And Salma, am I saying your name properly? Give me a yes or a no. Just curious. Um, so, uh, all right, cool. Um, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up this coffee session with Scott. If you have any other questions for me, drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to come back and listen and, uh, and look at them. And then tomorrow we're coming back at you. Okay. Monday. All right. April 6th. We're going to come back with you. We're going to have another cup of coffee with you and, uh, we're going to be able to uh, answer any more questions. And I'm going to have another topic uh, that we're going to be drilling into that'll hopefully help you. So if you have any questions or if you have any friends or family that want to attend and have coffee with us, invite them, but only, only if there are people, if there are people, meaning if they're, you know, kind of the same mindset where we want to build a, you know, a brand, a business. We also want to, we want to work on our mindset. We want to get that straight. And uh, we just want to be able to hang out with the right people. You guys know what I mean. We don't want to just invite anybody right to the party. We want to invite the right people. So if you guys can do that for me, share this, share this, uh, let people know. And uh, I'd be more than happy to hang out with them as well. And uh, just let me know that you sent them over and uh, that'd be awesome. All right. So that's it, guys. That is going to wrap up this little coffee talk with Scott. Have an awesome Sunday. And uh, we will catch you back here tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. All right, guys. Have an awesome, amazing day. As always, take care, take action. I'll talk to you soon.